What's going on, y'all? Lockout men, back in the place to be. Here with you guys once again, giving you guys this good podcast. I hope you guys like it. Hope you guys enjoy it. If y'all do, you know, y'all y'all know what to do. Y'all know what to do. All right, well, I'm here again with another podcast interview. This young man, owner, you, you're an owner operator, right? I, I, I guess it depends on how you define owner operator. Oh, okay, okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 figure, we'll figure all that out. Uh, this young man got a, got a YouTube page that I'll break down for you guys. Y'all can check it out. But um, let me go ahead and uh, bring myself on up in here. What's going on, y'all? Lockout men right here. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. Now, make sure you hit that bell, right? That, that bell is important. It's important because I, I drop interviews. I drop as, uh, companies exposed. I drop regular daily podcast i just do it all man but right now we about to talk to this young man right quick let me uh bring to the stage my man ice water 815 i like that name man i like that name where 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 where, where did you come up with that name man where, where ice water come up from Hey, first and foremost, man, I want to thank you for allowing me to come on this platform, man. And that, that introduction was so humbling, man. You, you, you're too nice with it. You're too nice with I it. Appreciate I, it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. No doubt. No doubt. I appreciate you for coming on, man. Hey, ain't no thing, man. Anything I could do to help out people out there that's seeking information, you know, that's what I try and do, man. So they don't make the mistakes that I made mm -hmm. with, with this trucking, with logistics and trucking or whatnot. But it, to go back and answer your question, the name came from, I think I watched the TV show and I heard a guy say, he was like, you got to have ice water in your veins to be successful in business. You know, I think I heard so that from somewhere the, too. That's where the name came from. And I used to always tell people, I started out in real estate. I started out with rental properties and I used to always tell people, they asked me about being a landlord. I said, if you can't put a pregnant woman out on Christmas, you shouldn't be a landlord. And they was like, "Oh man, you cold, you cold as ice." Yeah, and man. So when they kept saying that, that's how the that's how the name came up. Man, so you, that's where and eight one five is the area code where I'm from. All right, bro. So, him, you 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 wouldn't do that for real, for real. I mean, she, oh yes, sir. She's, yes, sir. She's yes, pregnant sir. though, man. Give I mean, give her a chance to you know get her get her funds up. You know, she kind of pregnant. It's in the middle of winter, man. Let me tell you this, though. Okay. okay. And this ain't, I don't want to get off the trucking subject or whatever, but when it comes to real estate mm -hmm. and rental property, if you a landlord, mm -hmm. if you a nice landlord, that's the quickest way to go broke. You got to be firm and you got to be disciplined. And the only way to do that is to set some standards and you stick to them. So if it happened to fall on Christmas that you get evicted, Merry Christmas, you get evicted. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> You had all year to prepare for Christmas. If you ain't got it now, you ain't gonna get it today. So man, don't you got to go? Don't, don't worry about don't worry about the subjects, man. I mean, we 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 conversating. So you know, we 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 gonna touch. We 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 probably might touch on everything before before it's all said and done, man. So you know, we'll touch in we'll touch in the truck and we'll touch in the you know being that you got some background in uh, real estate because a lot of a lot of truck drivers, you know, they're getting in this game they got real estate as a side hustle. You know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, one YouTuber, her name is uh, Shape World. And she's, you know, she's starting to uh, get into real estate. So, so yeah, we, we, we're going to touch on, uh, we're going to touch on a bit, bro. We're going to touch on the Brit. Yeah. I'm familiar with Shape World, man. Shout out to Shape World, man. She be supporting your boy. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. What's going on, Shape World? Make sure you guys, you know, make sure you guys go and check out that, uh, that video that me and her did not too long ago, uh, where we talk, uh, where we talked about dating and all that good stuff, but it's not about her. It's my man. It's my man's right here. Ice water in the house. So man, go yeah, ahead cool. and introduce yourself and let the people know where you come from, man. All right, man. Well, like you said, I got a YouTube channel, Icewater A15. Mm -hmm. I do YouTube videos basically just trying to 
identify some of the problems that I went through with becoming a motor carrier and trucking. And he asked earlier, was I owner operator? And I said, well, it kind of depends on how you want to define the term. I consider myself to be a motor carrier. I mean, I have my own operating authority. Okay. Um, you could be an owner operator. You own your truck, but you might be leased on to someone else. Right. Not that, not that, I, not that there's anything wrong with leasing on to someone else, mm-hmm. but usually when you lease on to somebody else, you kind of working for them. Okay. You know. Okay. Especially, especially from a legal sense, you actually are working for them. Me, I kind of work for myself, so I like to distinguish between owner operator and motor carrier. Okay. You you, so, you mind if uh, and, oh go ahead. I, I was about to ask a question right quick, but go ahead. No, nah, go ahead with your question. Okay, so all right. So I, I talked to a few people that uh you know that 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 was owner operator and the way you broke it down, you broke it down a little bit different for me, man. So so a person that actually owns their own trucks, right? But if they're leased mm-hmm. on to, you know, leased on to somebody's uh, MC number or a major carrier, that's still the same as working for that major carrier or working for that person. Break break that down well, for me. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Now we got to keep this specific to truck the trucking industry. Okay. In the trucking industry, we have what we call a motor carrier number. That's called an MC number. That's the MC. That motor carrier number gives you the authority to pick up a load in one state and deliver it into another state. Okay. Okay. And so if you operating under somebody else's authority, you may own your equipment, mm-hmm. but without that authority, you don't have the same responsibility as the person that's over you because they're responsible for your safety of that equipment. So in essence, you're an extension of their company. Okay. So that's why I don't classify myself as an owner operator because anybody who thinks they got, they buying their own truck right. would like to say that they're an owner operator. Right. When that's not totally the case because you're not fully in control of the business. Okay. Because technically, technically, when you're an owner operator, they say there's no forced dispatch, but you can't really pick and choose where you want to go. I can pick and choose where I want to go. Okay. Okay. If if my truck if my truck get loaded and I don't like the load, I can tell them to get that off my truck. See, I, I I'm the final say. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm the ATNIC. Right. If I was leased on to another somebody else, I would have to take that into consideration because I'm representing their company. I got my own, I got my own name on the side of my truck. Okay. Okay. So to me, like, if you don't have your own name on your on the side of your truck, then you're not you're not your own motor carrier. Not again. I gotta go back. Not looking down on anybody who doesn't have their own name on the side of their truck mm-hmm. because there's people that's leased on that make more money than the motor carriers. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. So it, it could go either way, but that's just how I define it and that's what makes the most sense from a business standpoint. Okay. Now you now you uh you you got your own authority and you pretty much broke cool. down the difference between uh having your own author- having your own authority and a person that's actually just owning their trucks. What what process what, what what process that you had to go through in order to get your own authority, and what I'm and for the people that. that don't know what own authority is, break break that down for them as well. The the process that you go through is a it's probably like a ten or eleven step process, and I actually got a video on my channel. I think it's called the ten steps to the authority process. But what the authority actually is 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 you taking your trucking company applying for a motor carrier number, satisfying the requirements to operate a motor vehicle on the federal highways. So, I mean, it's a couple of things that's entailed in that as far as you got to have insurance, you got to have a BOC3 agent, you got to be into a drug, um, a drug program, a drug testing program. And I'm sure it's, it's some more stuff that escaping me right now, mm-hmm. but, you have to once you once you apply for that number within the first nine months to a year, you go through a new entry safety audit where they come out and they make sure that you're keeping your records right and you in compliance with everything. Okay. So once you pass that new safety 
entry audit, you officially have your authority. And that's kind of how that operates. Now, as far you, have, you officially have your operating authority. Now, as far as as far as you having your own operating authority, you you also you you can somebody with their own trucks can lease on to you. Am I safe to say that? Correct. I can. I can. Um. Let me take it a step further. Mm-hmm. So. Your operating authority, we're just going to call that your MC number moving forward. So if you hear me use the word MC number, I'm referring to operating authority. Okay. It's, it's tied to a U.S. DOT number. That U.S. DOT number is the person who's responsible for the safety of the vehicles that are being operated on the highway. Okay. So therefore, when I bring someone on underneath my company, underneath my MC number, they have to, they automatically go under my DOT number, my Department of Transportation number. Okay. And then they also would go under my insurance. Okay. Because of the way that it is set up. So that's, I can bring on trucks if I want to, you know, so you have that option. Okay. But it's, it's sort of, it's sort of one of them situations where it could go really, really well, or it could go really, really bad. You know, depending on the caliber of the person that you bring on, because what ended up happening is your MC number is basically, how can I put this? Let's just say it's say a rolling report card for your trucking company. Okay. And if you bring on a truck who doesn't keep their equipment up and they're getting a lot of strikes against them, like for their they're getting log violations, they getting equipment violations. It goes against your MC number. Okay. And once your MC, once you get so many strikes, or well, not once you get so many strikes, once your safety score falls to a certain percent, you're no longer able to book loads with the brokers mm-hmm. because what's gonna what happens is you call for a load, right? Okay. They're gonna say what's your MC. They're gonna say what's your MC number. When you give them your MC number, they're gonna check your MC against two things. They're gonna check to see what your safety score is, mm-hmm. and then they're going to run your trucking company through this thing called Carrier 411. And Carrier 411, that's a whole nother ball game. It's sort of like a directory of, car- uh, of carriers that they talk about your performance. And then, you know, the brokers pay to have access to this information. So as far as the MC number is concerned, if your safety score is not up to a certain standard, they're going to tell you that they can't book you on the load because your safety score is too low. Okay. So, like, when you sign the trucks on, you gotta have that in your mind that okay, this truck is a is an extension of my company, and whatever this truck do is gonna be reflected on my company. Okay. So that's so I, I'm so with that said, you you have to you you have to stay you you have to stay on them per se, uh, you know, to make sure that the, that the owner operators you know keep their trucks up to par. I tell everybody, man, Landstar got a business model that I agree with. It ain't, it ain't a lot of things I agree with with Landstar, but this business model, I actually agree with. Mm-hmm. They require you to get an inspection every 90 days. Okay. And their inspections are done at particular locations. It's like a Landstar DOT inspection. It ain't even the regular, the regular, it ain't even the regular inspection. You can't just go get a regular inspection at the truck stop and, and think it's going to pass Landstar. No, it has to be a Landstar DOT inspection. They got one of the highest safety ratings in trucking. Okay, okay. And I'm led to believe that it's because of that they they requiring that you have your truck inspected every three months. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So that's the so that's the same mentality that that you take with any 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 potentials. Do you ha, have you had anybody uh, lease up under you at one point? No, no, I, I haven't had anyone lease up under me at one point because all the people that 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 come around they want their own authority. Okay. Okay. I've offered, you know, I'm I'm open to having somebody lease under me, but it would have to be somebody I knew and somebody that I was comfortable with because again, you're taking a risk. Okay. So if they don't keep their equipment up, it, it comes back on you. At the end of the day, whoever number on the side of that truck, that's who's responsible for, you know, the safety. Okay. So how long you uh how how long you how long you had your own authority, bro? I got my own authority in twenty ten. Okay, so ten uh well this twenty twenty, so ten years, huh? Ten, ten 
ten years. All right. Yeah, so how long? Yeah, ten years. How, how long you been trucking? How, how long you? How, how long you been in the business? I think I, I believe I started in trucking in two thousand and seven. I came from construction. I started out in construction trucking. Okay. And then I and then in twenty ten I went into over over the road. Okay. So. But I didn't come from a trucking background or nothing like that. Um, so so I mean, what made you? Anybody can do it. So what made you? You know what made you jump from, jump from construction, to to getting into trucking. What 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 was the, uh, what was the uh, influence that got you that got you into trucking? Uh, um, an emotional decision. I was at a I was at an auction and I was supposed to be buying cars. Mm-hmm. And I ended up bidding on a semi that had got repossessed. Okay. And I ended up winning the bid. Okay. And okay. I didn't know anything about trucking. I, I I didn't know anything. I knew I knew people that drove trucks, but me personally, I was like I said, I was in construction, so I didn't know anything about an over the road truck. So I ended up buying the truck because I won the bid, and I was on somebody else's dealer's license, so I couldn't tell them I couldn't buy the truck. Okay. Although I didn't want the truck. So I ended up buying a truck, and I decided I was going to find me a driver to drive the truck. And I was like, well, before I put a driver in the truck, I need to drive it and go over the road to find out what happens out there so they wouldn't be able to lie to me about certain things. Right. So that's how I ended up in trucking. And I came into trucking with a five-year plan, but that five years turned into 10 years. So, <laughs> you know, it's all- things happen, things happen, <laughs> things happen. <laughs> And so when I got to to make this story even better, when I got to driving the truck, I I saw how easy it was. And I was like, why would I pay somebody like a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a week to do this? And you could you could get all the money yourself. huh? And I could do it. Yeah, I could get all the money myself. (laughs) So I never I I won't say I never hired anyone. But in the beginning, I didn't hire anybody because I was like, man, I could do this myself. And, you know, it was something that was new to me. I was traveling. I was seeing people. I was going here. I was going there. I was all over the place. So that's how the time sort of fly past. You know what I mean? When you're out there running the road, it fly past. Okay. Okay. That's what's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So you, so you, so you jump. You you jump head first in 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 the buying your own truck. If if that's how you want to put it, I I, I guess that it it was a it actually was I'm an accidental trucker. I guess you could call me that because I made a mistake. You know, I was just I was bidding on the truck because I, I I was bidding on the truck actually because I liked the truck had a stripe on it mm-hmm. when it came through, and I liked the stripe that was on it. Okay. And it was a white it was a white freight liner and I liked the stripe and I'm like, Oh well, if I can get that truck for like five thousand, I'm thinking in my head that it's gonna go super cheap. Okay. I'm like, if I can get that for like five thousand, then I'm gonna get it. Well somebody else was bidding on the truck and I'm competitive. Okay. They so was, I was like, yeah, Oh, I got was, more money than this. Yeah, person. they was running it up. You know what I'm saying? What, what was the well, uh, you know we what, what was the what was the final bid on it, if I may ask? Uh I believe I got it for Either I got it for ninety two hundred, or okay. I got it for like around nine thousand or so. When it was all said and done with all the, the, the auction fees and everything, I ended up it was like ten thousand. Okay. For the truck. What year was it? <laughs> it was a ninety nine Freightliner. It's the truck that I got. The same truck I got to this day. Okay. 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 Ninety nine. Ninety nine Freightliner. Ninety nine yeah, Freightliner. Yeah, with M fourteen Cummins in it. Okay. For 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 nine G's, that's not bad. That's not bad, man. Well, I, you say that, but I didn't know that at the time. Well, get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just bidding on a truck. I had no idea what a truck cost. I didn't know really anything about a truck, mm-hmm. to be honest, when I bought the truck. Mm-hmm. So everything that I learned, I learned when I got in the truck. Okay, that's what's up. You know, I didn't I didn't go to I didn't go to a truck driving school, so I wasn't taught X, Y, and Z. Okay. You know, so I ended up, I had a buddy that was running containers out of the rail yard around around town. And I, I would go to work with him every day, and I would drive his truck, and we would pick up these containers, and we would go deliver them. And that's how I learned how to drive. That's how I learned how to drop trailers and hook up the trailers, because, you know, we going in and out the rail yard. Okay. And that's how I learned how to do, you know, what I knew about trucking was from him. Okay. So, so since you didn't go to school or anything like that, uh, you got you got your license through 
you you got your license through the guy that taught you how to how to drive the truck. When you say I got my license, what you mean? Your CDL. So how how, how did you how you just went took the test, the driving test, and and passed it all and got your CDLs that way? Because you just said you yeah, didn't I go. Did. You just said you didn't go to school or anything like that. So. No, but I'm I'm sort of from down south, so you know what I'm saying. If it if it if it got hair, I can ride, and if it got gears, I could drive it. So it doesn't take long to catch on for me. You know what I mean? They, you know, and I already knew how to drive a manual, and I was driving a manual in construction. But I was I had a class B license in construction. I didn't have a class A, mm-hmm. so I ended up just upgrading to the A, and then you know just going to take it in the test or whatever. Okay. To to get the class A. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so ten years, man. I mean, what, what what have you seen out here? What what have you seen out here that 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 <laughs> that you could tell us about in ten years of trucking? I just seen a steady decline in the culture, and and in the respect level for the truck drivers, in the camaraderie, in the unity, in the customer service. Like I've seen a steady decline across the board. In, in about every field of trucking that it can be while I've watched the prices for trucking go up each year. Yeah, I know <laughs> like that ain't what you was looking at, but that's that's kind of what I've seen over the 10 years because trucking definitely got its valleys and its peaks, but it seems like that the peaks are getting lower and the valleys are getting deeper. Okay. You know what I mean? When it, when it comes to trucking and we got a lot of new people coming into trucking who don't understand the logistics side of trucking. You know, there's no there's no requirement to start a trucking company. You don't need to pass a test. You don't need to have a degree. You know, all you got to have basically is an idea and roughly $2,000. You know what I mean? You can start a trucking company. So it, it, it definitely has contributed to the, the decline of of trucking over these last 10 years. And of course, trucking at an all-time low, as we have in this conversation right now. Give me a sec. Give me a second, Ice Water. Give me a sec. Oh yes, sir. Yeah, that'll work. All right, man. I had to, I had to shut my curtains right quick. Too much sunlight coming in in the background. Um. Yeah, man, you 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 absolutely right, man. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on in the trucking industry right now that's uh that's that's not looking good for truckers as far as uh as far as freight rates, uh regulations and stuff like that, man. Uh you know, the of course the COVID, I mean the C19, you know, thing right now. Um Right now, I'm seeing like truckers are getting together to uh, protest this uh, the the freight rates. Now, I I've seen a lot of videos about truckers talking about uh, they blaming the they blaming the brokers. You know, the brokers are are you know are cutthroating them. You know what I'm saying? But I'm also listening to the brokers that saying that it's the truck driver's fault for underbidding each other. You know what I'm saying? Where where do you come in? Where do you come in at on this whole trucker versus broker, broker versus trucker thing right now? I'm glad you asked. I got a couple of videos on my channel that really go into depth about where I stand on it. But to just scratch the surface about it, I understand that trucking is a business of supply and demand. Mm -hmm. And the common denominator in the supply and demand is substitution. And what that basically means is any trailer will do when they come for a broker. All they want is the low move. They don't care how nice your truck is. They don't care that you wear a uniform. They don't care that you're respectable as the shipper. All they want is a truck to get the load from point A to point B. Okay. There's there's nothing in trucking anymore that rewards a carrier performance. There's nothing like that out there. You know what I'm saying? Like the closest thing you're gonna get to it is with a with a three PL 
company, you find you a good broker, and they'll give you a lane every time the lane comes up. But they're not going to write you a contract and say, we'll give, we, we're sending this contract over because you're going to get 15 loads out of this place a week. You're not going to see that from a 3PL. They're just going to verbally say, every time this lane comes up, I'll call you. That's the closest you're going to get to being valued in trucking nowadays if you don't have your own shippers. So I say all that to say this. If the truckers accept the rate that's being offered, then how can we put the blame anywhere but on 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 the, on the carrier that accepts the rate? Exactly. It's not fair to say it's not fair to say that the broker is cheating the the carrier if the carrier is accepting the rate. If the rate was forced onto the carrier, that would be a whole different story. I'll have a different argument. It's not even fair for us to go to the government and ask the government to step in when we continue to accept what's being offered. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I even had a video when I said that if the carriers were really upset, I gave them an option. I said, listen, if you take a load that you don't agree with because you over leveraged, you being over leveraged don't have nothing to do with the government or you having a bad business plan don't have nothing to do with the government. If if that's the case that you in, here's, a, here's something you can do. Take that rate confirmation sheet and post a picture of it on the Google reviews for the shipping company and the constant new company. Mm -hmm. And that'll do, that'll do two things for us. That'll let us know where the shippers stand on this issue because nobody's heard what the shippers had to say right. about this issue. Right. Because right now the it's, it's, thing, it's the brokers versus the, versus the, uh, the drivers the carriers. or the carriers, the carriers. you know, we, we yeah. haven't heard nothing on, on the actual ship shippers. But if we start posting that stuff on the Google review, we'll find out where the shipper stands on this situation. And for two, it'll give carriers a baseline on what's being offered because every load not going to be a cheap load. And that'll give a person a gauge to be like, okay, this is where I need to be asking for this lane. And right now, that is the quickest, the freest thing we can do as carriers because until we come together – it, you know, and and get united, we're not going to be able to make a difference, especially when the government watched Walmart come in and run the mom and pop stores out of business and did nothing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why people expect the government to come in and do something when the government is the one who deregulated trucking in, in 1980 based on the shippers. Everything really... Everything really depends on how the shippers feel about this situation, and we don't know how they feel about the situation. <laughs> We're us as the carriers. We are the most important piece of the equation. The shipper has the product. The consignee wants the product. The broker and us are the two that make it happen. So we very important in this equation. But a lot of carriers don't know that they work because they're over leveraged. So they just got to take anything and run with it. And that just comes from being over leveraged and having a bad business plan, especially if they got in this when freight rates were way, when freight rates was way up, like when they were scared ELDs was going to mess everything up yeah. because they didn't base their business plan off unrealistic numbers. Okay. You know what I mean? So I got a lot to say about it, man. I got, I got, I got a lot to say about it, but hey, I, I appreciate, I don't, I appreciate you saying it, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, you, you I see what I'm doing. I'm listening. For what they're doing. I don't blame the brokers for what they're doing, and I don't blame the government for not saying anything. Because if I'm the government, I'm gonna look at it like, what do you, what do you want me to do? Like, it's it's a free market, and people saying that the brokers need to be regulated. Right. The people that are saying that the brokers need to be regulated don't understand what regulation is. Mm. And they like, oh well, we just need a minimum. Yeah, that's regulation though. If you're putting a limit on it. You're asking for regulation. And I have a lot of conversations about this with different people that don't agree with what I'm saying. And I said, well, have you contacted your house representative? Have you contacted the person that represents you in the Senate? You need somebody to sponsor a bill to get what you want and just go to the White House and be like, hey, I want y'all to regulate the brokers. That's not how that's not how it works. You know what I'm saying? It's checks and balances in the political system, and you got to follow the chain of command. Okay. You know, I'm be like, well, what have you done? What have you done before coming to to the White House? Instead of them going to Washington D.C., them truckers should have went to their capital in the state that they stay in. The, 
That's where they should have started, that, although the Capitol was I, quite closed. I, but that's where they should have started. I agree. I, believe me, I'm a, you know I'm a company driver. I'm I'm outside looking in. You know I'm I'm you know I'm I'm going to be in the process of of looking to get my own you know get my own truck and all like that, and then maybe down the line my own authority. But as I'm on the outside looking in, I'm 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 thinking the same thing you thinking. Like what? I mean I understand y'all y'all went to D.C. Y'all, you know, y'all voices was heard, but I don't think they, you know, they went down on the weekend. I really don't think going down there on the weekend, other than making some noise, was a good idea. Maybe they should have went down there on the weekday when it was open. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When it was open. Allow, or allow me to. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can interrupt. Go ahead. I was just saying, allow me, to, allow me to interrupt. You. I think it was a slap in the face to the government for them to go to Washington D.C. when they did. When they did, don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. I totally support what they're trying to do. I just don't support their mode of transportation on what they're trying to do. I don't like the way that they've done it, but I totally agree with with their message. But to go to Washington D.C. at the time when people are losing their lives, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's almost like a slap in the face. Like, look what the government is already dealing with. And now we come and we like, oh, well, we're not being treated fairly. The brokers are stealing money. The brokers been stealing money. They didn't just start stealing money when the epidemic hit. They been stealing money. You wasn't saying they were stealing money when the rates were sky high. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? I just think, like... I, I just would have took a different approach with the whole process, and I didn't agree with going to Washington, you know, at this particular time to voice them because I thought that was insensitive and it it wasn't really showing that you a team player. That's just oh, okay. that's just ice water opinion. Now okay. everybody got their own opinion. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I appreciate you saying that too, man. So, so you being so you being the carrier, um, yes, sir. You being the carrier. So you're able to uh pick up pick up freight from wherever. Um what let me let me make sure I get my my question right. What um I talked to I, I talked to the one uh the one gentleman and he says only use the brokers, which is the spot market, I, I'm I'm guessing. Only use the brokers as as a filler try to get your try to get your own uh own shipper try to get on with a try to get on with a company or something like that how do you go by booking loads and and do you have any you know contracts with with anybody i, I don't have any contracts with any i don't have any direct freight Especially, I don't have it. No, I don't have any direct freight because even the freight that I got that's that people that they call me on is going through a broker. Okay, you know what I mean? They might the company might call and be like, call so and so, which is a broker, and tell them that you we gonna put you on this low, but it's still going through a broker. Okay, so I'm going to say no because technically I don't have. I'm not with a company like that. Um, now let me tell you how I feel about. People who always throw out, oh, you need your own shippers. You need you need direct yeah. freight. Ain't nobody really telling nobody how to get direct freight. Ain't nobody telling nobody the challenges that you're going to face with getting direct freight. I know firsthand what the challenges are. Mm -hmm. First of all, if you're black and you're a male, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but you almost stand a better chance smoking a blunt with these <laughs> You definitely need a woman, <laughs> and preferably a preferably a white one. I'm on the phone. I I come get you. When I'm done. Preferably, what? Preferably a white woman. <laughs> okay. okay. Because. <laughs> okay. But, 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 okay. Ice water. Woman. Okay. What? Go. Go ahead. Ice water. Yeah, yeah. I'm just keeping it. Keep it one hundred, baby. Keep it real. Keep it one hundred. Allow me to keep it real for yes, a minute. Yes, sir. And then people be like, "Well, if you get a black woman." Mm -hmm. She a double minority. I don't even. I ain't even worried about all that right okay. now. Give me a white woman who can go out and represent the company to secure these contracts because that's who the white man at the company gonna listen to. Okay. So that's I need her. Okay. So 
another problem people are going to run into is they're not an asset-based company. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it, it'll be hard for a shipper to be like, okay, well, I'm going to deal with you, but you can only handle four loads a week versus dealing with a C.H. Robinson who can handle 100 loads a week. You know what I mean? So now you want them to increase the the people they got to deal with in this. You want the the shipping manager or the logistics manager, whatever they call him at the company, to increase the people he got to deal with when he could just deal with one point of contact. He could just deal with the sales rep for C.H. Robinson and get 100 loads moved a week. Okay. So until you become an asset-based company, until you got like three to five trucks where you could drop trailers here, because they, they're going to ask, the first thing they're going to ask you is what's your capacity? And be like, oh, I got one truck and one trailer. But they're like, well, that ain't gonna do us no good. You can handle one load, and you still gotta go deliver that load, then come back. So you might get two loads a week, and we shipping out three hundred a week. Mm. So you know, it's a lot of challenges people face unless they live in the right area where they can find a mom and pop shop that'll give you a chance. Because all you need is, is a chance to prove yourself. Right. But in trucking. Finding those direct shippers and those contracts, that's like finding a good-looking girl that cook and clean. It ain't impossible, mm. but it's, it's definitely pretty hard. You know what I mean? So that's how I feel about when people are like, oh, you need to get direct shippers and you just use the spot market to fill in. Well, let me give you a scenario. I had a, a Landstar broker who gave me these. He had his own, you know, Landstar do their own little private brokers or whatever. So he had his own customers. And every time these customers shipped, I got the load, right? Mm -hmm. So I was taking the load, and I was going and running the load. I might get three loads a week. I might get two loads a week. Every time they got the product ready, I got the load. Well, I was using the spot market to fill in. What happens when you use the spot market and you get tied up on a load and you can't get back to your other load? Mm. Because it happened to me. So then I had to decide, do I dare head back? to get this other load to keep him happy or do I play around on the spot market? So it's, it's, it's so many things that can go wrong and people just throw stuff out there without giving everybody all the factors that go with it. It's, it's so much that you got to look at and use before you make your decision. That's just like when brokers, when I'm, when I'm arguing with them about a rate and they're like, yeah, it's a backhaul for you. There's no such thing as a backhaul to me. And in order for it to be a backhaul, I would have to drive my truck backwards. <laughs> My truck costs the same amount of money, whether it's going west, east, north, south. I, I don't they tell you it's a backhaul. There's no backhaul. That's why it's a sleeper on my truck. This is my home. I don't have to go home. That's why it's a sleeper on here. I'm not in no day cab. I'm not out and back, out and back. I'm out here to make money. I, I go home when I decide it's time to go home, when I feel like going home. Now, and I'm not going to take your load just because it's headed towards my house. Okay. Okay. Do you do you feel that uh do do you feel with some of the with some of the carriers or some of the owner operators out here saying uh since they can't get no good rates with these brokers or anything like that uh park your truck uh stop you know d- d- just park your truck and 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 don't move no freight at all do you agree with that That's a tough one. You know what I mean? And and it's only tough because I parked my truck. <laughs> but I'm not going to recommend that to people because I don't know their situation. They might not be able to afford to park their truck. And I don't think the sacrifice, if you can't afford to park your truck, is going to produce the results you think it's going to produce. Because there's still people out there that's going to pull a cheap Exactly. Truck. Like, exactly. You parking your truck, everybody will have to agree to park their truck. You just want one truck. You parking your truck in a market that's already oversaturated with trucks, that's, that's diminishing return. There's no value in that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I park my truck because... When the brokers that I deal with, actually one of them called me today just to check on me to say that, you know, when brakes go back up, he's going to be reaching out to me because he know I'm not going to pull the freight for the prices that they got. Because another thing that'll happen is when you pull it dirt cheap, it's hard to go up. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It, it's hard to go but up. That, it, and so but, now then when they got in the computer system and they like, well, you pulled it last week for 600 Why you want 800 now? And you're like, oh, well, things was different then. They're like, yeah, but we can't give it to you for more than what you pulled it for last time. Right. So then what you what you do then? Right. 
You like, oh, well, it was a pandemic going on, such and such. But they already know. They like, well, if you did it one time, you could do it again. So they gonna stand on it. They be like, well, we'll give it to another truck for a hundred dollars more than what we gave it to you for last time. If you don't want to take it for the six hundred, we give it to another truck for seven hundred. And uh, so you, so like, like I've been saying, I, I I've been saying this for the longest, man. There's gonna be somebody that's gonna pull that freight. Somebody is always going to pull that freight and it's making it making it hard for you guys, you know, that wants to get the better rates to 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 get better rates because somebody else is always pulling the freight for what they already got. So if they want you to go from PA to PA to Florida for a thousand dollars and you know for a fact that after you after you factor in fuel and other expenses you might not get a profit out of that but some new jack that's maybe coming into the game that has to that that may not have as much of it's uh, of an expense that you do they're gonna pull it am i right you definitely right, and I got a famous quote that sums that all up, and I tell brokers this all the time. It's a truck for every load and a load for every truck. It just ain't mine. It's, uh, they, you know they, what I'm saying? It, it, it just ain't mine. They, I ain't saying you ain't going to get it moved at that price. You ain't putting it on my truck at that price. Exactly, exactly. So, again, back to back, back to what's going on right now with, with the truck driver's or with the owner operators versus the brokers, it's 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 a lose lose situation. I mean, and, and and I don't want to. I don't want people to think that the brokers are getting. See, I hear I hear a lot of bad information when it comes down to trucking, and I apologize that I can't dispel every myth out there. But when I hear people saying that the brokers are getting the same price that they've been getting. It is some validity to that, but let's dissect it for a moment. Mm -hmm. If the brokers have contracted freight, they get in the same price that they've been getting. If that freight ain't contracted, which they would have contracted this price last year sometime, so they would have never seen the pandemic coming. Okay. In that case, they're right. But to throw every broker in a bunch, the stuff that's coming on the spot market and stuff like that, they not they, they that rate is not set like through a contract. That rate can go up and down every week. So it's not fair to say that the broker is getting the same price that they've been getting because that's not true across the board. And you paint everybody with the same paintbrush. And I just don't think that's fair to the brokers. You know what I mean? Because I know good brokers. I know brokers will tell me exactly what they got in the load, what their profit margin is, and how much they can go up to the truck. Because of course, these brokers working for people. Mm -hmm. They got you know they got to I mean? make so they like, got to make like, money okay. too, right? They have a, they, they they definitely have a profit margin, and a lot of brokers right now they're gonna take a loss in the second quarter. They they gonna take a loss because rates so low, but they can afford to operate at a loss. Because they they making profit in the other quarter, okay. So they can afford to operate at a loss. Most independent carriers can't afford to operate at a loss. Man, honestly, lockout mm -hmm. man. Most independent carriers live in check to check. It's like just like a person living check. Just to check. like me, I'm I'm a dry, uh, I'm a uh, yeah. I'm a company driver living check to check. They live in check to check. And do you know I heard people say, well, you got to have six months reserve or whatever. Man, I've been trucking 10 years. I ain't got no six months reserve. And it's hard, it's, it's hard especially I, if you I, got responsibilities. Especially if you got responsibilities. And I only got, what, three? This is my daughter's first year in college. I got three more years of college. Once I pay for the three more years of college, I'm done trucking because it's not worth the sacrifice and time for, 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 what, for the money that I'm getting. So for me, I'll just go do something else. Okay, okay. But you know when they talk about six months, so I got I'm supposed to have six months of 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 insurance. I'm supposed to have six months to take care of my household bill. Trucking ain't paying like that, bro. Mm. Trucking ain't paying like that. Mm. And even if it was paying like that, so I'm supposed to go down to zero to start all over again? No, that that's not that's not life. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not living there. At that point, I'm surviving. Ice water, so, man. I, 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 what is, do you do you suggest? Like like I said earlier, man. I, I'm I'm thinking about you know getting my own truck and everything. But but be on the be be real with me, man. Do you, do you suggest? Uh, do you suggest anybody to to to, to get in get their own trucks right now? I I can't answer that question right. I can't answer that question for you because I would have to ask you a couple questions. First. Go ahead. What's your goal with trucking? And see, I say that I ask that question because a trucking plan got to start at the end to 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 dictate how you should go about doing it. Because if you start at the beginning, you you just get a truck to get a truck because mm-hmm. you you're just trying to make some more money. When that might not be the case if you don't go into it with the right things in place. Okay. Okay. So. So you got to decide what your goal is, and then you got to make your business plan based off what your goal is in trucking. Okay, okay. So you, so come up you with You might want to build a trucking company up. You might want to build a trucking company up and sell it. You might want to get some trucks and hire drivers to have some residual income. You know, like, it's, it's different things. People have different goals when they get into trucking. Trucking might be something you like, and you might want to see the world and live out a truck. You know what I mean? So it, it just depends on what you're trying to do in trucking. Okay, so that so you said so you said a couple of questions. So the first would be, first would be get a goal. What what what, what would be the next question for me? <laughs> I would need to know like how much do you need monthly? Okay, how much how much are your bills monthly? Because that's going to determine how far we jump off the porch. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got high overhead, you might need to pay some of that down before you go into trucking. Because trucking ain't really consistent like that. Like, you know what I mean? If you're coming from a consistent check, you can cover certain things because you pretty much know when you do your budget, man, I'm going to get about a G a week okay. as long as I run. Okay. You know what All I mean? Right. But when you get your own truck, things kind of change and fluctuate. And that G a week ain't exactly guaranteed, especially if you go on home time. Okay. So if your bill's too high to start with, trucking might not be the answer for you. Okay. Okay. So first get a goal or put a goal together. Uh second, how you know, how much I need out of need out of uh need out of that uh every month. All right. All right. This Yeah, the first is to get a goal. The second one is to be a re- be realistic about your finances. Okay. And basically what you wanna do is get your finances to where they're manageable. Okay. And if you can't get your finances to where they're manageable, then I don't think you should go out and get a truck because there's too many unknown factors in trucking that could tilt the scale out of your favor too quickly. One one cancel load can throw the whole week off. Mm. Okay. One place you late to one you late to one delivery could throw the whole week off. Mm, okay. It can it could change the week from you making a profit to you going in the hole. And you know, ain't nobody, ain't nobody talking to people about that. You know what I'm right. saying? They just like, oh yeah, you can go get a truck, do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, you can, but just because you can do it, don't mean it's the right thing to do. So, do you feel that there's a, do you feel that there's a difference between uh, an actual owner operator and a lease, a lease operator that's that's leasing through the company that they work for? Because I got. I got a couple of people that come in and leave comments like, like, for example, you know, I, I talked to, I, I talked to the, to, uh, this one gentleman and then somebody left, uh, something in my comment talking about the company, you know, they, they still getting good, uh, good rates for, you know, for, for the company that they pulling for the company that they pulling for is prime. You know what I'm saying? Um, somebody else uh, commented and and said that they was a glorified company driver. You know they they you know the company that like companies like Prime, Swift that that offers uh, lease purchase programs. Of course, 
they're going to try and get, you know, of course they're going to try and get, get them the rates that the company would get it for. So do you consider them guys like legitimate owner operators? Because sometimes they consider themselves as an owner operator, but I, I really don't see it, especially if they, you know, in a walk away lease, you know, they can just up and walk away from it. Well, I got to, I got to take you back to what I feel about an owner operator. I think it's a distinction that needs to be made between an owner operator and a motor carrier. Mm -hmm. Now, an owner operator, you could do a lease purchase or you could own your truck outright. To me, you would still be an owner operator. Mm -hmm. Even if you went a walk away lease, I would still consider you to be an owner operator. I'm not going to play with cement. Okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? And to the individual who's talking about when they say something about Prime, well, Prime can offer you the rates that they've been getting because Prime has a lot of contracted freight. It goes back to what I'm saying about contracted mm -hmm. freight. As far as the comments you made about a glorified company driver, it, I try to stay away from name calling because I never know what that person goal right. was when they got in the truck. Right. They could actually be accomplishing the goal that they set out for. You know what I'm saying? And for me to call them a glorified company driver, however they go about making their money has nothing to do with me. I don't care. Exactly. It's enough money out here for everybody. Come get it. I don't care how you get it. And I've seen people, if leases were so bad, now I, I probably wouldn't lease, but that's just me and my situation. My situation is my situation. Everybody's situation is different. But if leases were so bad, no one would ever complete them. Mm-hmm. The fact that people complete leases, well, I mean, it, it, I, I just can't argue with, with, with the facts. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of how I feel about a lease, I can't say that all leases are bad because people complete them. Okay. And they own their truck. Okay. That's what's up. And that's, to me, that's just another way to, to get in. The, they might not have the money to go out and buy a truck. And when people ask me what they think about, what do I think about them leasing? This is the advice I give them because I'm like, without knowing your situation, the only thing I can tell you is you can always go back to being a company driver if it don't exactly. work. Exactly. Now I don't have a. You can always go back to being a company. I, I don't have no. I, I don't have no problems with me personally. I, I don't have no problems with uh, with anybody leasing. You know, leasing from a company. I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of people. A lot of people go. A lot of people go to Prime simply because it's 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 the best company. It's it's the best company to them to 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 get in a lease truck. I mean, I talked to, I talked to truck uh, trucker Nene. You know what I'm saying? She's a lease driver with Prime, and she's almost finished with her lease, and she enjoys it. You know, I, I talked to several other drivers that's leased on to different companies, and they, you know, they they enjoy, you know, leasing through, you know, leasing through a company. Now, me personally, I mean, I, I will probably want to get, you know, save up my money, you know, save up about uh, about five Gs, you know, and go to a dealership, put that money down and then just get my truck from a dealership. And then I can just actually lease on to whatever company I want to lease on to instead of instead of, you know, going through a lease purchase through a trucking company. You know what I'm saying? I have um, I have better control over my truck. Uh, I, I will have I will have a, a little bit more say so on my truck, you know what I'm saying? Then you actually going into a company and get their, you know, you get their lease truck, their truck probably, your, your lease truck probably might be governing that 65. And then you might end up with a driver cam, a, a driver camera in your truck. You know what I'm saying? So by me getting my own truck, yo, I, I can open up my truck. You know, my truck could be open. And I, I don't want no driver camera in my truck. You know what I'm saying? But you you don't have no say so. You you don't have no say so if you leasing, if you lease option I mean, if you lease option from an actual company like Prime, Swift, or uh Snyder or anybody else for that matter. Am am I safe to say that? To a certain degree. Okay. 
Yeah, to a certain degree. But re- remember what I said about when you lease on to somebody, you really working for them. So even though it's your own truck, they could put certain things in place. Like they might come and say, everybody got to have a driver can. And you like, well, I got my own truck. They're going to be like, no, nah, our insurance said everybody got to have it. You under our insurance. Mm. We don't care that it's your own okay. truck. Okay. You got to put a driver cam in. So, I mean, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to make sure you open minded and you look at it from a business standpoint, as far as like, as far as like how individuals go about leasing, uh, everybody's situation different. You can't really put trucking in a box. There's no one size trucking idea that fits everybody. You know what I'm saying? You like me, you want to have control over your vehicle. You want to do what you want to do right. to it. But at the same time, we got to keep in mind when you lease on to a company, they might not have driver cams when you lease on, but then six months later, it might come out that you got to put a driver cam mm. in there. Now you got a decision to make. Do you stay with that company or do, do you do leave? leave? Mm-hmm. Because although they didn't have it, although they didn't have it when you started, you best believe all that paperwork you signed. That's where that's that's see that's another thing people don't read their paperwork. You better believe all that paperwork you signed is in the company's favor. You know what I'm saying? I I I, I tell people all the time. Signing contracts and paperwork when it comes to trucking is like trying to beat the casino. You go, you think you up. You pick you up to the end of the night and you find out you're not. And it's going to be some people that, you know, you're going to walk out broke while other people hit the jackpot. Mm-hmm. It just it's how it happened the same that's way. How, that's how it is. I'm a, I'm a gambler. So I, I know, <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah. I know the feeling of being up and, and so, down. And so I tell people all the time that, you know, th- they got these contracts and stuff set up to a way that's favorable for the company. So even though, you know, saying all that word and look like they looking out for you, they looking out for themselves because they're a business and they have to protect their interests. Mm. And that's just the way it is. Okay, okay. Okay. That's what's up, man. I... Even with the carrier package, even with even with the carrier package that I sign, that carrier package has when I when I sign up with a new broker, that carrier packet has so much language in it that I don't agree with it. And it used to be a point where I would cross out this, cross out that, send it back. They'd be like, okay, you don't want the load. You know what I'm saying? And just give it to another truck. So it's like, you know, you got to pick your battle. It's like, okay, I don't necessarily agree with this, but you know what? They gave me a decent rate. Let me sign it, pull it, send it back, and hope don't nothing go wrong on the load. You know what I mean? Because I don't have no protection. You don't have really no protection when you sign up with a carrier, when you sign up with a broker. I'm sorry. Okay. When you fill out the carrier package. Man, this this a this this is a lot to take in, ice water, man. You know, I I'm about to I have to give you that right there, man. There's a lot to take in. And I, I don't wanna I don't wanna throw I don't I don't wanna throw this I don't wanna throw this at you or anything like that, but you know, you you being a successful black man in the trucking game, man, for the for the last ten odd years, man. What what did you have? Do you have anything to show for, uh, show for it right now? Did did trucking allow you to live, live the life you wanted to live? <laughs> uh, trucking allowed me to sustain the lifestyle I had before trucking. You know, like I'm saying, I came from construction where at. at you know, I was only working nine months out of the year and I was probably, I was making good money with construction. So when I went to trucking, I was making kind of the same money in less time. I had more free time when I did the over the road trucking because with the construction, let's say that I worked 10 or 12 hours out the day. Well, it might take me two hours to get to the job site and two hours to get home. So you figure I done lost, what, 14, 16 hours out a day. And if I sleep for eight hours, what that give me? You know what I mean? So trucking definitely freed up some time. And it it gave me the money that I was used to getting, and it gave me more time to do other things. So, I mean, it definitely provided a good lifestyle for not only for me, but for my family members and people around me, too. But I want to say this now, because I don't think people talk about this enough. I made some mistakes in trucking along the 10 years that cost me everything. If I think about 
I think I've started over three times. I would have to check my records. But I think I didn't have to start over three times in trucking because you can make one mistake. And if you don't correct it before it becomes an error, you'll lose everything. Okay. And, you know, the one thing that I had working in my favor is that I, failure is not an option for me and I don't mind working. But sometimes you got to start over and rebuild, especially if you make a bad decision. It, it, it could take care of everything. But I don't think that I would have been, I don't think I would be where I am now working a regular job. I guess that's the best way to put it about trucking over the last 10 right. years. <laughs> Yeah, we, we we and I definitely wouldn't know the things that I definitely know. can't go back. You know, after being, you know, for me, after being the trucker, man, I I can't go back to nine to five. I I just it'd be, it'd be it was, if the money was right. You know, I I would like to if I could get a job where I can come in, look at a company, see where they're failing at, and get them a plan to to fix some stuff. Now that type of job I oh, could okay. do. But like just to go in and sit in a cubicle and somebody be got a, I got an answer to a supervisor do X Y and Z. Yeah, no thank can, you. Not can't do that, man. Do you think over? Do you think over the years the professionality of the truck driver has diminished? Uh, oh, do I think over the years the professionality of the truck driver? That's a tough one, man. Because like, I didn't. I never thought they was all that professional to start with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, they definitely were more humble and more respectable. But I, I don't know that I would label them as. You know what? Let me take that back because I do think it has diminished when I look at it from a professional skill set. I was thinking more of a professional interaction when you asked me the question. But when I think of it from professional skill set, it definitely has diminished. Even when it comes down to when I when I when I started trucking, nobody ever rushed you to back into a dock. Mm-hmm. If they did anything, they would get out, help you get into the dock. You know what I'm saying? Now you go places, people in a hurry to back up, they honking the horn, want you to get out their way, it's hurry up this, hurry up that. It wasn't like that before. Yeah. And that has steadily went down and down. I used to talk to people all the time when I ran the road. Now I won't even, I barely say anything to somebody. Like, you know, because I don't know people act like they got a chip on their show. They act like I told them to get in the truck. Mm -hmm. I didn't didn't tell you to drive the truck. There's no reason for you to have an attitude Mm -hmm. with me. And that's from the regular truck drivers. That's even from the guard checking me in to the mm-hmm. receiving clerk in the shipping office to to the clerk in the in the in the in the, in the office in the receiving or shipping office. It's like I didn't I didn't tell you to take this job. Why are you mad at me? Yeah. Exactly, man. So this C nineteen, man. Before we get up out of here, man. This C nineteen. How how has this uh how has this C nineteen affected you the last couple of months, man? <laughs> Man, it affected me the same way it's affecting. I'm sure everybody else. It, I didn't have to re, I didn't have to redesign my trucking plan because like, and I've been telling people this all along. Whatever your cost a mile was, which I don't even agree with coming up with a cost a mile, but cost per mile. But whatever it was, you have to change it now because most people probably do their cost per mile off off a hundred thousand miles a year, mm-hmm. right? I. I try to do, if I look at my cost per mile, I try to do it off 70, 60 or 70,000 miles because I'm trying to work smarter, not harder. I'm not trying to run 100,000 miles. I don't want to circle the globe. I don't want to run 100,000 miles to make the money. But my point being is with what with what to happen, our cost per mile going to go up because you're not going to be able to run as many miles. And my savings is taking a hit because now I'm into my savings because I'm not working. So it's affected me just like everybody else. And hopefully by the end of the month, things start to turn around well, and things slowly but surely start well, opening up. They said up. Uh, some some places is opening up already. You know, you had uh, some places that opened up on Monday, then you got a couple of more that's uh, opening up uh, this uh, this coming weekend. And then hopefully, you know, uh, it, it's nothing's going to never go back to normal, you know? So the new normal, the new normal, everything that you're seeing out here now is going to be an all new normal, you know, the trucking, the, the, the truck stops now got these little sneeze guards up, 
I, I don't think they're going to take that down. That's that's not coming down. You know, uh, some companies probably, you know, some companies will probably have you to, you know, come in with a mask on. Period. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't have a you don't have a mask on. You 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 can't come in or whatever. But yeah, this C nineteen thing has 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 turned everything inside out, upside down, flip flop, all that shit, man. All that shit, man. So so yeah, man. And I'm just thankful. I was a germaphobe before this, so I'm uh, this right in line with how I want to operate anyway. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I didn't like shaking hands or none of that stuff, so. I'm fine with that. I'm just, I'm, I'm fortunate and blessed that my family has not been directly impacted exactly. by what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's as honest as I can be about it. And I hope that we continue to be protected and blessed throughout it, you know, because I know other people, families haven't been that, that fortunate. And it's, it's definitely an unfortunate situation, you know, and we, we, as long as, you know what I'm saying? We go wake up every day and we healthy. Everything else will fall in line. I agree. I ain't even, I'm not even worried about, I'm not even worried about nothing else. If I wake up, I'm healthy. Everything else is water under the bridge. I, I can make anything. I agree with you on that. I, I, I'm, I'm a blessed person all the time. I thank, I thank the Lord every time I wake up, man. Just, just thank him for, to give me the opportunity to, to continue doing what I'm doing giving me the opportunity to get up, walk on two feet, have all my limbs and, and, and just be, and just being blessed out here, man. Just being blessed out here. So ice water, man, sounds like, uh, you know, you sound like you got, uh, some people in the background that you probably might need to tend to man. And, you know, I appreciate this conversation, man, because that's, that's what I do over here. We conversate, you know what I'm saying? It's you know I'm I'm a different type of interviewer you know I'm I'm more of a conversationalist I like to sit down and listen to 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 what people have to have to say it's about their experience that's that's what I want them to come in and 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 share with us you know their experience and Mr. Ice Water eight one five thank you very much for coming on man. man I appreciate you I appreciate the opportunity no doubt. Yeah, you you are a typical interviewer because most interviewers, you know, they try and put their own personal uh, prejudice or bias on the situation. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you sit back and listen that makes you atypical. So I appreciate that. No, too, so no doubt, respect. man, no doubt. Yo, for the uh, how how the people could get how, how the people could reach you, man. Listen, man, they can go to my YouTube page, Icewater A one five, or they can hit me on my uh email address. It's called axeice A one five at gmail dot com. And I'm pretty good at getting back to people on the email. So axeice A one five at gmail dot com. Right, so you say ice These trucking questions they got that. Icewater eight one five, eight one five. Let's see. There you go, right here. Here's his um uh... My internet is a little slow, but there you go. Ice Water 815. You guys can check him out right here. Uh he got a he got some good content on uh on his uh on his channel. I've been subscribed to him for quite a while. Uh you know, next you know Appreciate next time we'll probably get together and talk about this Amazon thing, man. I I know we didn't get into Amazon, but um you know, maybe next time we could probably uh, get in, you know, get in with the good, you know, we could probably do the expose uh, episode because, you know, now I, <laughs> now I got drivers Let's... calling me up, you know, to talk about the companies that they, you know, that they drive for. But I, I see right here, Amazon is, is, is one of the companies that you're, that you're pulling for. Let me ask you this right quick. Um, I, I know, I, sure, I, I, sure. I know we talked about uh, different type of brokers and and stuff like that but have you ever pulled freight for uber uber freight i think i did one load for uber what was your experience with them um, it was a positive experience okay so you so you would use uber and i i said like, you would use uber if the rate was right that's what's up yeah everything i'm right okay through. that's what's up so i mean you know if the rate is right because i feel like the reward need to equal the risk. So if they, if they, you know what I'm saying? If they can get that in line, then that's fine. And let me say something about Amazon before mm-hmm. we leave. 
I don't have a problem with Amazon. I just, I'm just one of them people that speak the truth. So when I did my Amazon series, I gave you the good, I gave you the bad, I gave you the ugly. That's everything. So when you, when you thinking about going to Amazon, you got all the information you need to make an informed decision. That's what's up. And Amazon is about the Amazon is on the verge of taking over to being a major player in the three PL space. I'm gonna say that. I now, agree. You know, we, we can we could talk about we can talk about Amazon on the next podcast. De- most about, definitely, you know, some areas some areas they can improve in. But my experience with Amazon has been positive because I understand the way that their system works. And when I don't agree with something, I back away from it. Exactly, exactly. Well, once again, man, Icewater813, you guys can go and check him out on uh, on his um, on his uh, was shout out your website one more time, or not your website, but your email, uh, your email. email. Um, my email is axeice815 at gmail.com. All right, and then you guys can also check him out on uh, Icewater815 on his YouTube page. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you know, just like Icewater did with me, hit me up in the Gmail, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com, or you can come and leave a comment in the description below, or just hit me up at the uh, Instagram over in the, uh, over in the DM. Holler at your boy. You know, I'm trying to do it all for you. I'm trying to bring different uh, different drivers in to talk, you know, to talk their experience, different drivers in to talk about the companies that they work for. And then, of course, my daily podcast that, you know, whatever, whatever's trending or trucking topics or anything like that. So on this note, man, I appreciate Mr. Icewater815 coming in. Is there any? Is there, is there anything else you want to say on the parting ways, man? You already know, man. It don't matter what type of truck you drive, as long as it'll deliver a load. But you ain't going to make no money in trucking. You can't keep that left door closed. That's my motto, Woo! man. That's what's up. All right. And on that note, we are gone. <laughs>